All right, guys, today we are doing the uh, carburetor on a roll air air compressor. Um, it is a Honda GX160. Um, all the parts that we use, I'll put it, there's a complete tune up kit that's got everything you'll need for this. And uh, uh, I'll put the link in the description. Um, first thing we're going to do is take off the air filter cover. Air filter. And there are three 10 millimeters, 10 millimeter nut, 10 millimeter nut. And then there's a 10 millimeter bolt right here. Take those three off. All right, and then uh, we're gonna turn this choke and the fuel on off both this way. Covers like this, you're able to pull this straight off like that. With them, with them out, it, it'll stop you from pulling it off. So pull them out. This choke arm off. Um, we're gonna pull this out a little bit. Now we got to get to this clamp. It's backwards on this one. Um, we got to get that clamp loose and the fuel line off. Some uh, long bent over needle nose clamp. Pull it up, and I'll just kind of get it at the base of the fuel line without squeezing too much, and just kind of pry it up. Um, we're going to, because there's gas in this tank, we're going to um, pull this fuel line off and uh, drain it into a, 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 you know, a bottle or something. I drain the first bit into a clear bottle. That way I can tell what kind of gas that they had in the equipment. Uh, if it comes out bright yellow, like this is good clean gas. But if it comes out bright yellow, that means it's old gas. If it comes out with water in the bottom, that means there's water in the gas. Um, this this looks like it must have sat. They must have let it sit for a long time or something, and they just finally started it. And they put fresh gas in it, and it's you know all the bad gas is in the carburetor turned to tar probably by now. I don't know. We'll know more when we pull this apart the piece of fuel line inside of it two cycle fuel line inside of it just to continue draining it off and i'm going to start off with brand new fresh gas you want to start off with fresh brand new gas every time um we got this part of the carburetor take it off all right so now we're going to pull this out you know to where it's you know at the just outside the edge of the bolts um and then we're going to Push this throttle arm a little bit and lift up. And then there's a spring. Done. All right, now we can work on this carburetor while the gas is draining. Always keep an eye on the bottle. Um, I have a disposal container that I dispose of all the bad gas. I wish I could figure out a way to use the old gas, like a heater system or something like that. Because I, I, probably you know dump out you know i three times a year i dump out 255 gallon drums of oil and gas and it's mostly bad gas and it cost me a fortune because of the bad gas oil they dispose of pretty cheap you know because they recycle it and but since mine's mostly bad gas they don't recycle it all right 10 millimeter we're gonna take off this bolt right here on the bottom, not the drain bolt, but the, the bowl bolt. We're going to take that off. Actually very clean looking in here, but then you look in the bottom of the bowl, and there's all this sediment, sand looking stuff. So that's been getting sucked up in the jet, leaning out the jet. So you got the bowl, bowl, to, bowl, bowl off of it. Speech impediment first thing Monday morning. Take the pin out for the float. Take the float needle valve out. This is going to be majorly just a 
a good rinse through. 10 millimeter, take this off, that's probably full of sand. Really clean. I would have thought with sand in the bottom of that that the sediment bowl would be full of sand too. All right, and then uh, 10 millimeter, or 10 millimeter, I'm an idiot. Uh, flathead screwdriver. We're gonna attempt to take this jet out. Now, if it doesn't come out, the acid I'm about to show you that I use, you can drop right in there and boil it out without taking it apart. It's just nice to sometimes, you know, to get it all apart and make sure that it's perfectly clean, the orifice tube and the jet, you know. But if it doesn't, if it starts to strip, don't worry about it. Just freaking, you know, clean it like this. I take a number two flathead screwdriver and grind the sides off so that it'll fit down in. And that's my permanent jet removing tool. That way it's got a good flat head on it and it uh, fits right in there perfect. Come right out, orifice tube, and the jet. Yeah, this is my trick that nobody else really knows except for anybody that's watched my videos. This is 14 karat testing solution. It is acid. Wear gog safety goggles, wear gloves. If you get it in your eyes, rinse with water immediately. It will blind you. If you get it on your skin, rinse it with water Im immediately. It will burn. Um, it, you don't, don't panic. It, I've gotten this in my eyes. I've been able to make it to the bathroom, rinse it out, and there was no damage. It was fine. Just, you know, be very careful. Wear safety goggles. Um, the, I've tried all the other acids. Um, I've tried making my own acid. Um, I wouldn't suggest using anything but the green top 14 karat gold testing solution. I'll put it in the description below. You just click on the link. Look, I got it on my skin already. But um, put it in the uh, link below. And um, see, it doesn't melt through you. It's not like robo cop or anything like that. But it does burn. But uh, put it in the description below. I'll put it in the description below so you can use it. Don't use any other acids. It melts through the jets. It melts through the aluminum. You know, um, it, it it's, you know, or it doesn't do anything at all. So I, I've, I've tried. I've, I've ruined many a carburetor trying to figure out the best stuff, and this is the best stuff. All right, so that being said, we're going to put a couple drops in this jet. We're going to put a couple of drops in this orifice tube. Then there's a couple of spots here. We got to uh, we're going to put a couple of drops in there. A couple of drops in there. Now you see, see it just simmers in there. Boiling it out. Simmered right there. Boiled it all out. You see how that stuff just changed right in front of your face. It just... Real lightly rinse. If you want any splash back? This carb cleaner, you get it in your eyes, it's gonna hurt really bad, but it's not gonna blind you or anything. Just sit there and take it, blink your eyes as many times as you can. Um, once it's done evaporating, it stops hurting. So, just so you know. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put the straw on on this. This is brake cleaner. You can use carb cleaner or brake cleaner. It's fine. And you're going to spray through this and this and make sure that they're good and cleaned out. You're going to do the same with this. And this. Make sure they're good and cleaned out. Um, we got one more jet. We're going to remove this idle screw right here. Flat or head or Phillips head. With a flathead screwdriver, you're going to pry this out. Just stick it up in there and pry it out. Um, i got to hold the carb with the other hand, but it'll pop right out easily. This is your idle jet. We're going to pull it out. We're going to set it upside down. It's all plastic on this one. Some of them are brass. So if it's a brass one, you'll do another drop in there to clean it out. Since it's just plastic, acid isn't going to react because there's no brass in there. So we're just going to spray through it with the straw and the carb cleaner. We're going to rinse everything off and out. Get everything all nice and clean, rinsed. 
So we're going to put the idle jet back in. It's got flat sides on it. Um, there's a flat spot right there. It's going to set the flat side against that flat spot. So just get it lined up, push it all the way in. Then we're going to set this uh, idle screw back in. We're going to turn it into where it's about at the halfway mark. Like that, where it's an equal amount sticking on it, out on each side. Um, you can fine tune this when it's running. Once it's filled up with air, it'll idle down. And you can turn it up or down as needed from there. All right, orifice tube. There's a flat side. Flat side points towards the jet like this. Right on in. The jet has a flat side on it. Flat side, you know, the flat head side goes up. The flat side goes down towards the orifice tube. That way this pushes the orifice tube down and holds it in place. And then with your special screwdriver you made, tighten it down. Now again, if this doesn't, if it starts stripping, don't even worry about it. It's brass, it's soft, so it will strip out easy. Just drop the acid down in the hole and boil it out there. I do it all the time. You may have to do, repeat it and, uh, you know, do the acid, rinse out, do the acid, rinse out like, you know, two, three times, but it will clean it right out. See how nice and new that thing looks now? And we're going to grab the uh, float or the needle valve. Um, notice I didn't take out the O-ring. I left the bowl gasket. I left the needle valve in place. Oop. We don't want to remove stuff that we don't have to because uh, if I remove that gasket, bowl gasket, as soon as I got it out, it'd swell up and you'd never get it back in. It's no big deal. In the tune-up kit I put in there, there'll be in, in the tune-up kit, it's super cheap. It, it'll be in the description. It has a brand new carburetor, brand new recoil, brand new coil, freaking all the, the extra stuff that you'll need. It's all in there. All right, we're going to grab this pin and we're going to put it in, hold the float in place. I got to have two hands, but it goes right in. Hold the float in place. Put the, uh, whatever this is called sediment bowl there we go put it back on tighten it down 10 millimeter the uh, bowl goes on you're going to have the drain bolt on the opposite side of the fuel line that way when it's in place here the fuel lines over here the sediment or the uh, drain bowl will be, bolt will be over here where you can get to it very easily if you have it here you you might have stuff in the way and certain applications whatever but we're going to have it right here so that you know, can easily get to it and drain it out. Make sure you know, if you ever get water in your system, you can just drain it that way and, and, you know, hopefully revive it without having to go through this whole process again. Then we're going to put this bolt, make sure it's good and clean. There's usually a bunch of sediment right in there. You have to scrape it out and rinse it out and make sure it's good and shiny and clean. back on tighten it down carbs ready to go back in before we do that though we're going to want to make sure that this is completely the tank is completely dried out we're going to uh i'm going to take an air hose and blow in there and we're going to get all the the bottom bits down in there out if you have to just stick a rag down in there and let it soak it up but the air hose works great with the air chuck and we're going to just rinse out the inside of it real good with air, get it all dry, make sure there's no water or nothing inside of it. And we're ready for reinstalling the carburetor. Um, make sure your gasket's on the back. Brand new ones will come in the kit. Carburetor almost all the way on. Get to where the studs are just right at the edge there. Bring the throttle arm up and it sets right down in, no problem. If you push this all the way in, it won't line up that easy. And the spring, we pull it out. And we get it set in this hole. And without the spring, it'll surge. We don't want surging to happen either. Get a little pinch, make sure it doesn't come off. Push this back, then we're going to put the fuel line back on it. Put the hose clamp back on it. there and the 
choke arm goes on. See, it's got the metal pin goes into the choke like so. And then there's um, the gasket. Oh, there it is. Um, this brown spot goes up to the top right like that. Then uh, we're gonna pull this that way, this that way. So we can slide this on easy. The hose either comes off this side or out of the valve cover. Either way, it just goes right back in where it belongs. And open up, slide it in. The choke arm, you may have to push down a little bit for it to pop on all the way. You're gonna have to force this hose back into the valve cover. Then two 10 millimeter nuts, 10 millimeter bolts. Tighten that all down. Uh, air filter back on with the metal wing nut on top of it. Air filter cover. Throw it on the ground. No apparent reason at all. Put the plastic wing nut on top of it. Tighten it down. Make sure there's nothing left. Um, gas. Check the oil. Oil should be full to the top on this engine. Go right to the top. Um, I use 30 weight and I use full synthetic. It actually even makes the engine run smoother. You'd be surprised the difference between cheap oil and synthetic. All right, um, gas in it. That's all pretty much for the idle is pretty well perfect on it uh, when it bangs down you can turn the idle down by turning this counterclockwise or turn it up if it dies out when it bangs you know when it bangs that that release valve on you can turn it in clockwise to turn the idle up if you need to all right guys if this helped you out in any way shape or form give me a thumbs up hit that subscribe button look gas overflowed when i was draining it and that nice it's everywhere now um Hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up. Uh, today's t-shirt will be in the description, as well as all the parts that uh, you might ever need for this. I'll put all, everything you need in there. Um, if you want to do any advertising through my channel, message me. I'd be more than happy to have you. Peace.